I'm Ritesh Jain. I'm founder of NRI Zen in Pine Tree Macro. In this podcast, I'm going to talk about the structural changes taking place in India. I believe India has all the characteristics of making of a bubble. But don't get worried. Bubble is not a bad thing. This chart from HDFC mutual fund caught my eye. I also had these kind of numbers, but they have put it in a much better way. I want you to focus on the manufacturing GDP in FI23 to FI30, overall exports and the merchandise export. Now look at my comments. I'm just removed. We'll be the third largest econ- third largest in the world on nominal GDP basis. And manufacturing GDP incremental delta will come from non-services. I've been writing for the last two years. Incremental delta. I'm not saying services are going to come down. I'm saying the increment. Money is always made in that incremental delta. Overall exports, we've started making for India and exporting from India. So make for ourselves and exports from India. Merchandise exports, people are not taking into account. Think about it, $453 billion to $1.2 trillion by FI30. This is actually a new profit pool growing much, much faster than the nominal GDP. And for this profit pool, you need to find new winners. There are enough new winners which are going to be created over the in India over the next few years. And they will be growing much, much faster than the nominal GDP growth rate of the country. Now, there is some uh, comparison also given when some of these countries, Thailand, China, Indonesia, Vietnam, when they started their growth, you know, era of manufacturing, when they went into manufacturing, and Vietnam is the recent example for us. What was the manufacturing as a percentage of GDP at the start? And what was manufacturing as a percentage of GDP at the end? Now, you can all do your numbers, okay? What will be the real GDP growth rate in India 2022 to, let's say, 2030? Just put our numbers over there. 2022 to 2030, can we grow by 6 to 7%? I, I would say it's reasonable to expect 6 to 7%. Manufacturing end result. This is a very, very important question. The start is 15%. What will be the end? If it is, let's say, towards 24, 25% and above, we are creating, we are talking about massive, massive new winners emerging in the market. We have absolutely no idea as of now. I've seen it in the history over the last 30, 40 years. Whenever, whenever the macro moves, the kind of winners it creates or the losers it creates on the other side is massive. Again, I will go back to the same thing. Merchandise export, $453 billion to $1.2 trillion. Manufacturing GDP from $450 billion to $1.2 trillion. So nominal GDP will rise by two times, but manufacturing GDP can rise, rise by three times, 1.5 times the nominal GDP. So it's a, it's, a, it's a mind-boggling number. Is it all achievable? Yes, it is achievable. Uh, obviously, there are ifs and buts, but the numbers on phase do not look like that it, they are, you know, they're coming out of space. These numbers look achievable because it has happened in the past. And this is the chart which I wanted to show you. Okay, uh, there is, you know, um, India's corporate profit as a percentage of GDP is already at a 15-year high. The question is, will it go to an all-time high? Yes, I strongly believe it will go to an all-time high in the coming years. So we are almost on the verge of breaking the 2007 high. And I think by the next year, in a couple of years, we should be breaking this 2007 high. And since if corporate profitability to GDP is rising, it gives you a very good, you know, enough indication that there are some, you know, some of these sectors, some of these companies which are contributing to, you know, where corporate profitability is rising much, much faster than the GDP. Okay. They can continue to actually support higher valuations uh, because market needs should take that into account. Okay. Uh, this is a chart which gives me a little bit different answer. Gross capital formation, which is a need of an R without gross capital formation. So money can either go to asset markets or money can go to real economy, creating jobs. I should have mentioned it in the previous slides that manufacturing creates five times the job created by services. That's why India is seeing jobless recovery. So if manufacturing GDP as a percentage of GDP will rise, jobs will be created. And I believe this gross fixed capital formation will also help in creating jobs. 
So money, as I was saying, money can either go to re uh, to creating uh, money can either go to creating capacities or money can go to asset markets. I believe over the next 12 to 18 months, asset markets will be starved of cash, and this cash or this money will shift to creating capacity, shift to creating jobs, which is actually a very good thing. And that roughly means that time is coming that markets should flatten out for 12 to 18 months. And you will see more action on ground with new capex, capex turning into investment, investment turning into production, production turning into income, income turning into consumption and savings. Over the next two years, we should see this cycle playing out. And which is a very good thing, because then it means that India will not be a short bubble and burst. India can have a very long cycle of a bubble created by macroeconomic fundamentals. So if gross capital formation continues to rise, it will pressure the equity markets because the money will leave equity markets for capex. This Everybody would have seen this kind of chart, but it is mind boggling to see the kind of investments happening in infrastructure in India. As an economist told me, make roads, bridges, expand railways network, and more inclusive growth will come. This is exactly what India is doing. More inclusive growth. I can understand it has not happened. It takes time. Everything takes time. But I think over the next five years, this is we are putting all the building blocks for this manufacturing GDP, for this job creation, which I've been you know, talking about for some time now. So where will this money come from, actually? India is a capital-staffed economy. I think there, there is no bigger lender in the world than Japanese. And if you see over here, just see the numbers. How many a survey was done in Japan? What kind of Japan is actually firms favor growing in India? the largest favor they have is among all the globally is actually glowing in India. It's not only the Japanese firm, it's South Korea, which is becoming age very fast. They want income earning assets. They are investing in India. Canada, as I said, is investing in India. So they will be investing in real economy. They will be investing into financial markets. Think about UAE, think about Saudi Arabia against oil. Can they think of reinvesting that INR into our economy, I strongly believe that over the next few years, you will find that oil money, which the oil which is exported to India, converted into INR for those countries, the same INR will be invested in the Indian economy. I just showed you the chart of Japan because Japan is Japanese firm are by are just largest because they're the largest pool of savings in the world. But Please understand that you cannot have uh, manufacturing without cheap and reliable energy. In fact, I, I do not even know. There is no costly energy rich country in the world. You need to have cheap energy and a reliable energy. For that, I do not mean coal alone. You have to transition away from coal. But without energy transition, India will not be able to achieve its dream of becoming a manufacturing powerhouse. or getting people into the or inclusive growth with job creation. I just wanted to put this put these two articles in front of you just to tell you the size of the opportunity which is staring in our face. Clean energy investment of $500 billion, renewables $385 billion. All of this is also, you know, gels into my team of electrification that without electricity, without a cheap and reliable energy and electricity and grid, it would be very difficult for us to become a richer nation. Finally, we've realized that the best cheap and clean and green energy is nuclear energy. So just for information, there are 60 nuclear power plants under construction in the world. 26 of them are getting constructed in China. Seven of them are constructed are getting constructed in India. Two are getting constructed in even in Bangladesh. Zero is getting constructed in US, but they've just uh, changed an act. They, so, sorry, they've just uh, sign, uh, you know um, cleared an act which is going to President Joe Biden's desk to sign. 
they are they are going to actually promote nuclear energy even in us so i strongly believe and even in india we had years of uh, talking about nuclear energy but because of some vested interest india could not increase its uh, you know india could not increase its uh, energy uh, supplied from nuclear energy for the last few years but those things those things which are hampering india's nuclear energy uh, supply are actually getting melted away and they are being sidelined so india is going to be putting lot more uh, new capacity which you can see under the planned and the proposed one under india again i had to put a little bit over here because i had to uh, you know uh, comment that if i were to ask you today do you know which country uh, produces largest number of nuclear uh, engineer in the world uh, your answer would be united states china actually it might be china or united states actually the answer is india per unit cost of production in india of nuclear energy is actually one fourth of that of uh, us and it is even cheaper than that of uh, china so why we have not been able to build our nuclear energy is a mystery to a lot of people it's not a mystery to me simply because i knew that there were a lot of vested interests we did not want india to become self sufficient in uh, power production but all these things are now changing <clears throat> uh, after crude electronics is the uh, is the one is the second one which gives us heart attack <laughs> hard take actually because of the kind of deficits which we have uh, due to electronics sector 25% of all our deficits come from electronics after crude so there are a lot of charts but i'm very uh, you know this is one of the success stories of india pli schemes 10 years back apple used to be making possibly refurbished phone no not even refurbished phone actually 2017 18 they started making refurbished phone in india uh then this year they'll be making 8 billion dollars of phone they'll be making in india they made last year at 2028 they'll be making 40 billion dollars worth of phone in india samsung makes large number of phones in india this is a success story of india what does this mean actually you can reduce your trade deficit and this is a large uh, you require large number of people to assemble uh, phones So it's a employment generation. I know we are not making phone; we are assembling phone, but that's fine. You're reducing your trade deficit. Reducing trade deficit means increasing GDP. You are creating employment at the lowest level. Okay, so it's all good. And I think this is this is a game changer for India. India's, according to Morgan Stanley, eight percent of India's GDP by 2032 will be contributed by electronic sector alone. that's a very big number so there's a lot of changes happening in electronic sector in india most of the people would not even know about it we actually toy exports are up 60% to 300 million dollars in fy23 in india not a very simple thing china used to make toys but now it's become a middle income economy it has left and it's a very labor intensive job so they left that thing plus india was getting into exactly the same place where china was 20 years back we we took all of that toy small 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 things are happening it is it is you know a secret superstar i call because when i look at the number the numbers are just mind boggling and it creates lot of employment at the lowest level so this is one more sector might be a smaller sector which is again seeing a lot of changes in india who would have thought this thing a few years back defense this is again one of my favorite ones you know obviously we are uh, exporting some small missiles to armenia we've started sending a lot of stuff to countries which neither can take from us or they cannot take it from china they are sandwiched in between india is a neutral country started making low end defense so they are importing from india think of it going from nothing same thing it's the same success story of what you are seeing of apple from nothing to making 50000 crore of exports by fi29 aren't we going to create new winners over here you know it's just mind boggling to see this thing and will we stop over there no obviously we will not stop over there can we make high end things i do not know about it but we can certainly make low end things we can certainly make some bullets okay 
because we are exporting those bullets to Germany. I know that thing. Uh, there are some basic small missiles which are being exported to Armenia. This is how you start. This is actually how you start. So we will be reducing. We are the second or third largest importer of, uh, of defense goods in the world. So now we'll be reducing our imports of defense. And on the other hand, we'll start exporting at the smallest level. Reduction in import is increase in GDP. It's very simple. So we are seeing increase in GDP, increase in employment, and much broader growth rate for India. This is my favorite sector, actually. There is no other sector I worked I, I was doing a lot of work on where, we, where can we provide the maximum amount of employment. And I can tell you that there is no other sector which, where we can provide the maximum amount of employment. And I can just understand that the government's priority is employment. So this is a sector I would keep it in focus for the next five years at least, simply because of uh, the government focus on employment generation. Okay, this is one where AI cannot come and, uh, you know, uh, have AI cannot disrupt this particular sector. So we, we can divide the uh, tourism into three parts, religious tourism, leisure tourism, and medical tourism. You can already see the medical tourism 2023 was what, $10 billion. By 2029, it'll be $25 billion, two, two and a half X. This is creating new level of winners. Unfortunately, a lot of them are in private equity hand, but this is creating new level of winners. This, wherever these hospitals, these facilities will be created, it will create the entire ecosystem of places around them, develop around them. All those tier two, tier three cities where all these things will be created, medical facilities will be created. A lot of job creation will happen on the medical tourism side. I'm pretty sure after Ram Temple, we are talking about a lot more about uh, religious tourism to India. Number of tourist arrival have to go up. I was just, I'm not having the numbers in front of me, but number of airports we've doubled in the last four, five years. So we are creating the basic infrastructure required conditions for tourism in India. So this, this keep an eye on the sector. And I oh, just realized that uh, NSE has just launched a Nifty Tourism Index. So this is interesting development which is happening from the uh, from the exchange also. Uh, AI, no discussion is complete without AI. This is a very important thing that we generate 20% of the global data, but the global data center capacity share, we have only 3%. How many of you are okay having your data being kept in outside your jurisdiction in some other countries where, where AI is getting trained on your data and is getting, imp and is ge getting improved based on your data? I think more and more governments are realizing that data sovereignty is required. So this is this is going to be a very big opportunity where I believe over the next few years, Indian government or any other government will will insist on having uh, data being kept in their own jurisdiction. So the entire, uh, this is an underappreciated investment opportunity in data center the entire ecosystem of data centers. Keep an eye on this thing. This will be going to be a massive thing. And uh, as per BOFA, India's GDP gain from AI is expected to be second highest to China. Uh, although I do not have the uh, any idea about what it will do to employment, but uh, at least on the left side of the data generation or data center capacity, I believe there is a very big investment opportunity. Uh, I keep on hearing that you know foreigners are uh, FPIs are selling uh, Indian equities. Actually, they are selling yesterday's winner. They always used to own uh, a very large quantity of banks and IT services in India. Banks uh, at one point of time, BFSI plus IT used to be 55% of the benchmark. So obviously, and even on that, they had a very disproportionate share. So if India is shifting from services to incremental manufacturing GDP. Wouldn't it be you know, right to see that they will reduce their stake or increase their overweight, oh, sorry, reduce their overweight in BFSI in IT sector? And that is exactly what they are doing. They're not selling India. They are reducing their allocation from the sectors, which they also, I think, finally believe uh, are not going to be game changer for India. Yes, no country's, uh, you know, uh, no country can function without the banks. 
but banks cannot be the disproportionate share of an economy, an economy which is transitioning from services to manufacturing. So I, 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 I think people should look at, when they look at this data, they should drill into this data and see that there are some sectors where FIs are slowly increasing their uh, you know, holdings. And I, they're really smart people, they understand this thing. So you will see that, that there would be continued pressure on financial services and IT, but there are some other sectors where they will increase their holdings. So just the last two slides, uh, what does the future of India look like? So India leapfrogged manufacturing and went directly into services. Services don't create as many jobs as manufacturing, hence you have a jobless growth. India now focusing on transitioning to manufacturing and hence focus on infrastructure. Jobs requirement and market winners are going to be completely different in coming years. I would say the both, this last thing again, jobs requirement and market winners are going to be completely different in coming years. So what is the market outlook? Buying energy in non-USD has insulated India from volatility in oil prices. You can see that thing by now. Government focus on this transition from services to incremental manufacturing should be taken seriously. Manufacturing energy transition is not easy and will require a lot of energy. Hence, electrification, defense tech, and tourism continues to be our macro theme for India. This transition also means that sectors which are rightly placed will continue to do well in spite of any market cap. I do not want to get into this discussion of large cap, mid cap, and small cap. When the structure of economy is changing, you cannot get into that thing. In fact, there is only one benchmark which I look at, which is NSE 500. Okay, I do not look at any other benchmark. And that composition is also changing. Finally, finally in this brave new world, listen to the governments and regulators. If they don't like anything, don't touch. If they are focusing on developing some part of the economy, then it is a no-brainer. Just a little bit about NRIZEN. NRIZEN is a distributor of mutual funds. And it is basically caters to uh, non-resident Indians who wants to invest in India. I write a lot uh, on, uh, you know, NRIZEN about these, some of these thought pieces, put some charts. Uh, you can register on NRIZEN website uh, if you want access to that. Uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn or on my Twitter. And if any of you are interested and still interested in, uh, in investing in India, you can directly log on to NRIZEN website and invest directly, or you can schedule a meeting with me, which is the schedule button is there on the NRIZEN website. You can schedule a, a meeting with me uh, to discuss, uh, you know, what are the options for you to invest in India.